Hello, Scream Demons, and welcome to the Screens from the Basement podcast with Sam and Casey. I am one of your co-hosts. I am Casey. And I'm Sam. Well, let's get screaming. Let's get screaming because we are joined with the creative minds, the crazy minds, the insane minds behind <laughs> one of our favorite podcasts, Attack of the Killer podcast, and the duo behind Halloween Palooza, which is coming up. This October, we are joined by Insane Mike and Jason. Boys, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us on, man. So happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys might remind uh, you guys might remember Mike, our listeners, uh, from our Terror Vision Bad Channels episode that we did just a few months ago. Um, yeah. That was a good time. Uh, the most Jason... listened to episode of the show. I'm I'm assuming. <laughs> Yes, yeah. it broke records. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Actually, it was a pretty, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big episode, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the weirder we get, the more, the more views I feel. You know. <laughs> Plus, it tied in with one of our late nights that we were hosting. So yes. I think those, I'm sure people are yeah. cruising the internet, and be like, "Who are these weirdos talking about bad channels in 2024?" <laughs> <laughs> us. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. That's us. Yeah, and Jason. This is actually your first time on Screams. Welcome, yeah. man. I know. Yay. I'm finally here. I'm so yeah. happy. We've so uh, happy. We, we've talked on previous shows, but yeah, never yeah. never Screams. So this is awesome. S- Sam actually haunted your guys' show recently as well. I yes, did. Did. yes. So thank you guys for, for braving that episode. Yeah, you're lucky, <laughs> I came back. Over here you're lucky I'm even here <laughs> after what you've done to us. Me. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I would come back for another uh, teen trilogy. Uh-huh. I'll pick better movies this time. I promise. Uh, those three were perfect. They were great. I say there's better movies than my Super Psycho right. Sweet Sixteen. Not yeah, many. part two. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, there is two two more of them. I there think. are I know, two right? more yeah. that I could add into another trilogy. Uh, sequels. Yeah. Yeah. I I would love to do a Jennifer's body episode with someone other than this grumpy asshole that co-hosts this show with me. Oh, we got plenty of grumpy assholes on our show. Yeah. (laughs) But at least there I might have, you know, Tad and Mike to back me up. Um, (laughs) Oh, that movie rules. It is. Yeah. You might have more fans of that one. Yeah. I'm not going to back you up on that. Okay, guys, you got to bring me. (laughs) We can can wait a while, but I would like to come back on for that movie because I have lots of thoughts and I don't need them pooped all over right away. (laughs) <laughs> that would so, be nice yeah. we're but well, we're, we're not going to be doing any pooping on anything on this episode that's for, no. for, a, for a patreon down the road but uh today we're talking <laughs> halloween palooza with jason and mike guys first question because i don't know the origin of this what's the actual origin of halloween it's, it's one yeah. of my favorite stories it literally this this will be our 14th year of doing it insane and, right uh, 14 years ago, Mike and I were like, Hey, let's have a Halloween party. We'll, uh, we'll have some bands play. We'll try to do a zombie walk. We'll, uh, watch some movies and invite all our friends. And that was really it. Yep. And then every single year it got bigger and bigger and bigger. We had to move out of this building. We went to a hotel. We were there for years, kept getting bigger and bigger. We had to make it two days. Went to yep. two days, got bigger and bigger. Then we had to move out of the hotel and go to the our town's biggest event center. And, and it just keeps getting bigger every year, 14 years later. It's yep. crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. So we, we've been to, we were, we, our first year was actually in the, uh, the old haunted hotel. Um, and I just, I loved that place. Uh, yeah, that that was such a that's such a cool venue. Like, I love that it's outgrown that and grown into the convention center. But man, I'm always going to hold that year as like a very special special year. Plus, that was the year that you guys brought Kelly Maroney, and mm-hmm. I like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was definitely a charm entire... to that hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it was so old and. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, we heard that from a lot of the regulars. They were nervous about going to the Bridgeview Center just because. There's just this charm and aesthetic of that hotel, mm-hmm. and 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 they always treated us nice. So we, you know, we're nervous of the change too. But like where we're at now, I just know there's no way we could ever do the hotel yeah. again. It's just, yeah. it's just gotten too big. Gotten oh, too it's, big. Yeah, 
it's plus, it's so plus, big yeah plus the venue you guys have now because you guys do have a film festival and screenings throughout the whole con like that theater and that convention yeah. center is i'm yeah we have Dude, nothing, that's, we have nothing like that in our convention center that's that's, that's been one of the the most incredible parts about the growth of this because I swear in the first years, it was literally a hang a bed sheet on a wall <laughs> or, or wheel in some TVs. And that's our film fest where we're watching movies on. And then those first few years or most of the time at the hotel, they were just, they were just on pull down little screens and shitty yeah. little projectors. And there's the ambiance, even though a charm, we said charm, but it was <laughs> uh, just down and dirty version of a film fest. And, and, and now can feel proud to like show other filmmakers films and actually no you can come to the event we before we're like nah don't come we'll play your movie but you don't want to come <laughs> and now we're like yeah come we have this nice giant theater to play it in it's just been such a relief such a an amazing thing about the new place well do you remember i think it was maybe the second or third year when we were still in the hall mall and we had a filmmaker drive up from Texas. It's like, oh no, we what were, have you done? We were so scared and nervous and <laughs> almost embarrassed because yeah, oh, it was definitely. just projected against this wall. Um, but I mean, she still had a, great, had a time great time, and, of course. Yeah. Because it's Halloween and Blues. Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. But yeah. There's something kind of punk rock about that, too. Like, I feel like an indie filmmaker, oh. like, you know, you you might not ever get into a theater with your like crappy little short film you made yep. for like 50 bucks but like someone wants to screen it and they're like in their backyard or something like hell yeah i'm gonna be there that's cool like <laughs> yeah and it was all of us and all our friends so the crowd was responsive and and showed yeah. them a good time so at least there was that but yeah yeah that's awesome that's so cool that's that's what i love about home uh halloween palooza is it just it like even though you're in the convention center now like it still has that kind of like homegrown feel where it's like there's there are people that i see there like that 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 i've seen there like over the years and people that i know yeah. you you bring back i mean i met brian before we even really knew each other there because he has a booth and yep. i bought one of his books Heck yeah I, yeah what right here actually because i still oh. haven't put it back on the <laughs> shelf from our episode <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah have you guys noticed that you you get people coming back every year for like vendors where they're like yeah we just need to keep coming back because this is just the vibe is something like we don't get anywhere else it it truly is the best part is it's a homecoming it's a it's a the weekend we're gonna hang out with our friends so just that's it's some people's vacations they come from all over the midwest hours away uh, it's what i love about it is just it's it's just a weekend of friends coming together to hang out and it always makes it special and fun that way. Yeah. When did you guys start introducing like celebrity guests then? Like it started as a Halloween party and then you're like, no, we got to invite. I think it was the first guests. time was the year three, three or four yeah, where we were really trying to kick things up a notch and expand what happens at Halloween of Palooza. Cause before it was, like Jason said, it was like a zombie walk, live bands, project a few movies. And by by year three, that's when we're like, well, let's let's start getting celebrities and let's do let's start doing this kind of event and this kind of event. And it all started with uh, our very first um, celebrity was Linnea Quigley. Yeah, she's, nice. She's kind of a friend of ours. She's appeared in three of our films. And we're like, well, I'm, I'm, I know we can get Linnea. This is one we know. This will be an we easy, this will be an easy get for our yeah. first uh, celebrity ever. So that's awesome. So <clears throat> you guys also do a, a haunted tour every year of, or is that? Yeah. One of our main yeah. guys that has helped us over the years is a big ghost hunter uh -huh. and he has his own ghost hunting company. <clears throat> and so he would take a group of people out ghost hunting some nights Last year, he wasn't able to help do a ghost hunt. That didn't work mm -hmm. out. So we did a little haunted walking tour of a Tumwa. You know, try, it's it's really a kitchen sink event. We just try to have something for everybody at all times. I mean, you, you can't see it all, but yet you're not going to feel too bad that you miss some things. But yeah. yeah. So my, my take on it is um, the fact that we try, 
we try to appeal to every niche of horror <laughs> fans and Halloween fans and have something there for everybody that's going on. I don't want anybody to ever say I was bored. I am happy to get complaints about like, man, I couldn't do everything I wanted to do. I'd rather have that complaint than be like, man, eh, I didn't have this to do. So I went, we went to the mall or whatever. Uh, see, growing up, I, one of my things, um, which is still a big part of my life, uh, it was a family thing. Every year we'd go to the Iowa state fair. And as a person who has grown up at the Iowa state fair, I have defended the Iowa state fair to thousands of people who is just like, well, it's just carnival rides and, and junk food. And I'm like, no, there, if, if you go to the Iowa state fair and you're bored, it's your own fault. Yeah. Cause there's mm -hmm. so much to do. You can't even see it all. If you go the whole time, the two weeks of the Iowa state fair. And that was always in the back of my mind of what I wanted Halloween of Palooza to be. I wanted it to be basically the Iowa state fair of, of horror, of horror events. So, and also as a person who has attended a lot of cons, as a filmmaker who has attended a lot of film festivals, I did not want, I don't want, or we don't want any single part of our show to be half-assed. I mm -hmm. mean, we've been to um, plenty, we've been to plenty of film festivals where, um, oh, the film room is in this hotel room and we open the hotel room and there's like five folding chairs and a, and a bed sheet and nobody's in there when they're just projecting the films. I'm like, I traveled all the way for this. Or I remember one film festival we had, we had a film in that we drove about like five hours away <laughs> to watch our movie um, projected on a screen in a room that the whole side of the room was sliding glass doors and there was nothing covering those doors in, during the middle of the day. So you could not see what was projected because the sun was just shining through. There was maybe three other people in attendance of this, of the films of that time. Um, they had vendors that was like four or five vendors in a, in a little tiny conference. We've room. seen a lot of what not to do. Well, yeah. We'll <laughs> so, it, so it's always been my mission statement of like everything um, has to be given 110%. Hell yeah. Yeah. And you guys absolutely through. do that. Like that, that's something me and Sam talked about the last couple of times we've been there. It's like, well, we can't do everything. Like we got to, we literally <laughs> yeah. take the program. We're like, all right, this is what we're doing at this time. Then we'll go eat. And then this, and then this, and then this. Yeah. So like you we've guys do a hell just of a scheduled, job. Like, what <laughs> yeah. we're going to do. Um, and yeah. one of the things that I would like to do eventually, uh, one of these times where, we're uh, up there is is i'd love to do the haunted the haunted tour the haunted like whatever that area ghost is event. because it's some yeah. yeah the ghost events um because yeah that's something that i'm very interested in but it's just never worked out yeah for you know what we've wanted to do previously so yeah but so mike you mentioned that this is the uh you wanted this to be the the iowa state fair of horror cons so like are we gonna <laughs> oh, get yeah. like deep fat fried butter at the at the also, also, sometime I like i wish i wish yeah <laughs> people who can't be entertained for days by junk food and carnival rides are not friends like, <laughs> good well said yeah. yeah yeah we need some sort of butter machete shitty fair yeah, sort of butter way. machete i don't know yeah. some sort of a ride called the decapitator yeah yes the butter carving <laughs> contest but you only use like slasher weapons chainsaws right? yes <laughs> chainsaws and ni butcher knives yeah <laughs> i like it what's what's something you guys don't have at the convention that you'd like to do someday is there anything where you're yeah, like that's, that's something we want to do yet that's tough because oh, we always do try to mix it up too if if we do the same thing like more than two or three years in a row then it's like okay it's time to put that on hold and try something different uh, do you have any ideas for hmm. that? I'm just I'm trying to think of the other cons that we'd go to. Uh, hmm. Feels like the film we tried a lot of things. big thing, like moving into an actual theater. Like that's a huge thing to get into an actual theater. Like, yeah. yeah, that's definitely a, a very big and important step for me because the film yeah. festival part, being a filmmaker, um, just always want to 
keep improving the film festival side of the yeah, it's literally on a stage so it really makes like the award ceremony feel just a little more actual yep. awardsy yeah <laughs> yeah you know that's but hmm we've had so many things what about what about dream guests we gotta ask it oh, who's yeah. who's on yeah. the dream guest list they're too much we just can't yeah, even talk it's too about big it. It's it's tough when it comes time to deciding on um, the celebrities because of where we're at in like central southern Iowa. We um, have to. We're not near big cities like Des Moines or Iowa City, um, and we have to cater to the like, normies. Yeah, we have to cater to maybe a, people a outside of our. And, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So when we look at like. Um, lists of possible guests and we see things like oh frank hennenlauter that'd be great yes <laughs> it's just gonna be you and i at that table I bugging I frank know. the whole time i know, <laughs> you know i mean so. oh no we're making that eight no, hour I know, I know, <laughs> I know, but not the same kind of line yeah 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 not the same kind of line but you i feel like i don't know i feel like you guys have gotten big enough to where if you balance that with like maybe a more like you said like a main a more mainstream guest like yeah, yeah. You get some trickle down, you and I'm sure you, I'm sure oh, yeah. you guys get because you know when we work with Supercon, we're I don't know if people know this, like we we're the go to people for the horror guests. Like when they book yeah. horror people, it goes through us first, and then nice. <laughs> then they book them. And every year we get when's when's Bruce Campbell coming? Right, the whole lot yeah. of ideas. Right. Every oh, time yeah. it's mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell. He's yeah. the name. Bruce so guys, Campbell when is Bruce Campbell coming Robert to Halloween? And Blue? Oh, all it's been this year is Robert England since yeah, it's been right. Street yeah, since it's our all theme. we've heard. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, I got you, a Freddy. That counts. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. One of the things I'm really excited about this year, though, is that we've we do have more celebrity guests than we've ever had. We've doubled our most we've ever had, and then some. It's just that continual growth thing that. We're trying trying to keep pushing so it's just it's that's i mean it's something i want to keep pushing for is mm -hmm. that growth i didn't mean to hit you there sorry. but yeah just uh just seeing that runway of celebrities and i hope i hope it keeps going yeah what's our, what's our total list this year well i mean there's we have eight alone from a nightmare on elm street franchise Crazy. which is who 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 do you guys got coming for Nightmare on Elm Street? I was about we to got, say you have a shit ton of Dream Warriors coming. Oh yeah, yeah, four mm -hmm. and five more. Uh, we got Lisa Wilcox, you know, star of four and five, definitely five. We got the Danny best Hansel, final girl of the series. Oh, I think I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, Andres Jones, uh, Whit Hertford, who was in Jurassic Park too, of course. Yes, yeah, also. yeah, Raptor uh, kid uh joe seeley and erica anderson they're both in five he was the comic book guy and she was greta and ken sagos from three and four yeah. kincaid and then we yeah we got a freddy guy that was uh freddy's uh stunt and stand in and glove double in part four and then he was also if you watch freddy's nightmares he plays the nurse freddy in it so oh yeah yeah. So that's really cool. He, I'm excited for his stories, you know. <laughs> right. So just eight alone, which is more than we've ever had. I think four or five is the most we've ever had. So we got eight just from A Nightmare on Elm Street. And then we have Mark Donovan back, who was in Shaun of the Dead. Freaking yeah. awesome, right? Yeah. Yep. And then he was so nice last year, too. So like, he's oh my such God. a sweet guy. And it's no wonder we had him back. Yeah. 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 Justin Beam, he'll be back in the official capacity. He's doing a, a really fun little art of documentary filmmaking panel where he's nice. got slides and stuff with yeah. all his Screen Factory. He does Factory like freaking everything yeah. on Screen Factory. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, we're, our featured films, Reunion from Hell 2, and it had had yeah. three of yeah. our guests in it, but it's uh, it's got uh, Lisa and Danny both in it from Part 5. Yep. But we're also bringing in the director of that movie, and he was he was pretty stoked to come in. His name's Hayden Newman. Yeah, we did a Q and A yeah. with him a, a while back. He's he's very cool, very cool guy. Yeah. So it just keeps going. <laughs> you just go to Halloweenapalooza dot com, find that out. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So just excited for the growth part. Yeah. And we've yeah, never that... had any Elm Street people before. 
So yeah. yeah, I was just like, hey, let's go for it. Yeah, that's an an, an incredible lineup. Like especially as like Nightmare on Elm Street's my franchise. Like that's incredible, and it's the 40th anniversary of the original movie. Like that's yeah. Yeah, a big way to celebrate Elm Street. Mm-hmm. Speaking of 40th anniversaries, um, this is coming from a place of uh, I just watched The Last Starfighter on the big screen and Night cool. of the Cats. Been playing on Pluto TV a lot. Any chance we might get a uh, Catherine Mary Stewart at, at the con oh. eventually? Maybe would, with Kelly Maroney returning. Be, yeah, I don't that'd know. Be cool. just, <laughs> we talked to her agent the year we had Kelly. Oh, really? I can't remember. It was just ended up being out of our price range. That's fair. At the time. Yeah. So, yeah. This is actually from that Halloween of Palooza. Oh, I paid nice. way too much for this VHS at a different vendor <laughs> booth so that I could bring it over to Kelly's booth and get it signed. Oh, yeah. Way too much at another vendor booth. But I did not care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was she was a sweetie. She, she was, was so awesome. Very yeah. awesome. Yeah, Kelly was was the best. So much so that we stole her. You had her for yeah, yeah. Stole her <laughs> yeah. last yeah. year. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like as Jason, I know you're a major toy collector hmm? too. Yeah. I've, I've heard that. I might've seen that too behind you. Um, mm-hmm. have you bought anything at Halloween at Palooza or you're like, I've never seen this anywhere else. Like I, you had to buy it. Well, sort of. Yeah. I mean, I always do my best. We try to go around and get something from every vendor, but the thing that is definitely yes to that is we always have a lot of artists. So yeah. there's always original art there. Um, we have a always have a crap ton of authors at ours too. Mm-hmm. Like to me in my head, it's like, how do people sell books these days? Is that even how do you I, do that? That's gotta be the hardest creative I think I outlet like in the world. Books the last time I went though. Yeah. I really right, did. Which, like we, yeah. Yeah. We have a it's little just, book it, reading panel just to help these authors yeah. talk about mm-hmm. uh, it's gotta be so hard. Yeah. It's just interesting. It feels like we're in a day and age where there's far more independent authors out there. <laughs> yeah. But then how do you how do they manage to sell their stuff? I'm I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah custom toys, there's a crap ton. There's always somebody that's uh, doing up something that's neat and will always catch my eye. I, yeah, like I said, I try to grab something. I don't have anything in arm's reach yeah. to show, yeah. but I do. If you guys will indulge me a little bit. Yes, sure. Um, oh, last absolutely. year, I got so fucking excited. You guys, like, <laughs> I was, I was literally walking out. It was like the vendor booths were all closing. I was gonna go back to the hotel for a little bit and then come down for the after dark festivities. And I just happened to glance to my right, and I found there was. The oh yeah, I forgot you bought these there. Four things i have ever bought and it lo- cost me less than 20 bucks i have the oh, entire those- line oh, yes. now of so the jealous. universal burger king monsters yeah. like oh god like casey can attest i was geeking about mm-hmm. these for like did you even sleep that night you were so excited. <laughs> I, didn't. I was so jazzed. he's playing with was, his action figures i was literally making universal monster like i kept the bags and everything but i opened them because i'm like i i don't i play with my toys i'm yeah. sorry like i just yeah. do they display better out of the bags too <laughs> they do yeah. yeah it's cool that's so. cool man i'm so happy you found those yeah, oh it was great, great. <laughs> now you guys need to help convince Sam, that he needs to buy the NECA versions of those Burger King monsters that are coming mm, out. They're so cool. Mm-hmm. They're cool, but they're not the originals, and I have oh, the originals. That's, that's... You can get both. <laughs> yeah, I say it doesn't mean you have to give those up. You get to have both. Yeah. You have the bigger ones standing right next to the smaller ones. Oh, Sam. it looks on. they display that's really true. nice in front of the. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Mm-hmm. That's fair. You know, I went to Walmart the other day and I was going for adult things and I was really proud of myself, but it was also a really sad adult moment that I chose to get like shower rings and a fresh shower liner over, you know, like a brand new um, NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universal Monster crossover. (laughs) Been there, been there too many times. But I did, I walked past, I walked to the the bathroom section and I I did what I needed to do. (laughs) I grew up so fast, Mike. (laughs) <laughs> so proud. So proud. But, Sam, I'm with you though. I'm all about like I would rather have the original toy, yeah. original figure, whatever. But 
dude i mean i've got the original toxic crusaders toxic avenger but jason picked up that who put that one out trick or treat uh, studios trick or treat yep yeah. That, yeah. oh Those my god new ones are great and they i'm are sorry great. it kicks the ass of the original one so <laughs> hey, much. yeah that's fair you you gotta just be a psychopath like me and buy both <laughs> yes yes yeah that packaging on the new one oh, the canister. oh it's so cool. but it's 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 such a great sculpt because it's like it looks just like the original but somehow improved mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's awesome and it actually has all the accessories and the the, the toxic slime too that you will never ever find in <laughs> looking no. for toys yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Casey always talks big, like he's like, oh, I buy all this stuff. And he does when I'm not with him. But then uh, he'll take me out on the town. We'll go like thrifting and antiquing and all the comic shops and stuff. And I'll have like armfuls of stuff and I'll just be recklessly irresponsible with yes. my money. <laughs> and he buys like two things and spends under $20 in the day. And I'm like, what the hell? Like I thought because I'm recklessly a, irresponsible all the other times on That's your own time. Is. Yeah, he was probably there three times that late earlier that day before he took you there. It's <laughs> probably that's probably that's usually yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, boys. Well, again, when is Halloween a Palooza? Where is it, and where can people get those those tickets? Those ticks. Well, it's at the Bridgeview Center here in Ottumwa, Iowa on Friday, October 11th and Saturday, October 12th. On Friday, it starts at 5 p.m., goes till midnight-ish, and then on Saturday, starts at noon and goes to midnight-ish. And all those spooky details can be found at Halloweenapalooza.com. That's a weird word, Mike. Why did you choose that? Can you spell it still? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Halloween Apalooza.com. You know what? It's, it's a name that no one else has. <laughs> That's right. And yeah. it's great for like you even weren't... if you misspell it, like your guys' you know name is gonna be the first one that pops up. It's great SEO. So <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. Oh man. And my I love phone the name. and my phone, you know how it has like recommended words. Mm-hmm. It's Halloween, and then right next to it. It's Halloween of Palooza, all the no, way spelled yeah, out. It's there. I like it. Yeah. We it talk about your fest a lot. <laughs> yeah, we love it. We love it. It's we amazing. Really it's one of our favorites. You guys do an incredible job. Yeah. Uh, we got to end this with one more question, though, because mm. we, like we can't leave our double feature question alone. Like, we yeah, have we, to, have, we to have to do the double ask. feature question. Mm. So I'm going to ask the double feature question. If you guys are going to watch two Halloween-centered movies in a double feature back-to-back, what two movies are you guys going to pick? Jason. Each of you. So Jason, pick two, and then Mike will have you pick two. Make you go first so I can think about oh, it. Oh, gosh. Well, since it's uh, in theme of our this year's Halloween Palooza, I personally love A Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and 5. I think they're a perfect little piece. Oh, yeah. They go right together. Even with the Kirsten change, uh, you know, that happens. And it really confused me when I was younger. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I love, love, love those two movies. And I'll, I'll uh, defend Dream Child all day. Uh, it's to. great, even with Super Freddy. Oh. Okay. Super, he's Super Oh, Freddy. Super Freddy rules. Super Thank Freddy you. rules. Thank yeah, you. I'm on the Super Freddy train. We almost had him. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Super Freddy. Uh, so uh, that's an easy one for me. I'm, I'm excited to. I'm, it's my goal before then to at least... Uh, get Tiffany and the girls and the kids all caught up one through five, at least since all our guests are kind of in there. So four and five, I love those as a set a lot. Me. Um, I tried to stall, buddy. I know. I appreciate it. (laughs) I'm going to go, I'm going to go with my first film uh, of the evening would be the original Halloween two. For Fuck some yeah. reason, that one out of the entire franchise, even more than the first film, gives me the Halloween feels more than anything else. And I don't know if it's that beginning where it's Michael POV going through the back alleys of this like suburban neighborhood where mm-hmm. it just autumn is all over the place and you're seeing the kids running up and down the streets trick or treating, which they were trick or treating in the first one. How long does that? How long does Haddonfield get to trick or treat? I know it's not. It gets fair. dark Amazing. really early in Haddonfield. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think in town it's like three hours, and that's it. I know. Anyway, um, uh, and then f- so for double feature, gosh, um, gosh, so many great movies that give me the Halloween feels. 
I'm, and I'm actually trying to figure out uh, what my October viewing is going to be. So, mm. um, oh, you don't have a spreadsheet all ready to go with dates and. <laughs> I I want to. <laughs> I'm putting together help help putting together this little uh, event first, though. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of taking up my time yeah. from doing <laughs> cool spreadsheets. Um. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, knee jerk answer. So we're not running too long. I'm gonna go with Night of the Creeps. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. yeah. One of my all time favorites. Love, love that, that movie. One. Yeah, I love that movie. And for some reason it always it doesn't take place in how ha- at Halloween, but it always gives me kind of the it's Halloween kind of feels vibes. too. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's like it's it's one of those like hodgepodge movies that just celebrates all of horror leading up to like when it was released. And yeah. I mean it's it's kind of just the perfect movie to put on like Halloween to me is like going to a friend's house and like hanging out in their basement all evening and yes. watching horror movies. Yes, you know, like absolutely. when I got too oh. old to trick or treat, there was like one year where I was just sad and I stayed at home. And then the next year, my friend was like, just come over. We'll watch scary movies. And that just became what we did for the rest of yes. like, all the way Same. through high school. And yep. like Night of the Creeps is like one of those perfect movies to throw on with friends, like on a Halloween night. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So good. Four great choices. Four great choices. Yeah, four incredible choices. Hey, our viewers, you should make the excellent choice of going to Halloween Palooza this yes. October. Uh, Mike, Jason, thank you guys again so much for for coming on, chatting Halloween Palooza, and everyone go us. check it out and get those Freddy gloves signed and stuff. And yeah. watch the last episode or listen to the last episode of Attack of the Killer podcast. It's really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> about three That's stone cold masterpieces <laughs> <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the screens from the basement podcast with sam and casey please follow us on facebook twitter instagram and tiktok you can subscribe to this podcast on apple spotify and if you want the video portion you can subscribe to us on youtube as well Pick up exclusive Screams from the Basement merch, including shirts, hats, totes, and so much more on our Tee Public store. You can use our Fangoria affiliate link for all of your Fango needs. You can use that to buy any magazines, t-shirts, and anything else Fangoria related on their website. Please visit shop.fangoria.com slash Screams from the Basement and use promo code Screams from the Basement to save yourself 20%. And thanks for tuning in. And sweet screams. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.